back, everybody. This is Heather Lockyer with Lasting Conversations, and we continue our lovely conversation with the Dr. Laurel Geis. This is the third of our episodes in this series. Thanks so much and have fun. Let's talk about that for a second. It just when you can then just ask for some help. Yes. So we can ask. Um, so I, for me, I think what's important is um, I can ask for guidance from my soul. Right. Mm -hmm. I can ask for guidance. Um, you know, some of us believe in angels. I do. You know, some of us believe in guides. I do. Uh, spirit guides. You know, there's there's a lot of help. There's a lot of forces seen and unseen that support us. Right. And, um, you know, asking for that help from that unseen realm and also asking for help from the seen realm. Right. Like that's right. why I have my monthly soul guided journaling experience and i call it an experience because it's always different but right. it's just a you know it's just a safe space where you know if someone is struggling with something um they can share it and they will get support from people like myself or you or others who you know may or may not have had a similar experience but some you know as we go through life um I have discovered, you know, we we are having similar experiences, even when we don't think they are, they right. are really similar, right? Like you right. said about the tornadoes or the hurricanes or this turbulence, you know, once you get into turbulence, I think it's really healthy to be able to talk about it. And that's one of the true gifts that I feel, you know, during our monthly uh, experience when we get together. You know, it's interesting, Heather, because the people that come uh, to the experience, there's some that are come every time, some come in, drop in, drop out. It's always a different constellation of souls that gets together and doesn't matter. Here's the beautiful thing about it is right. it doesn't matter um, who is there. The right people are there who are supposed to be there and everyone mm -hmm. has an opportunity to share. And there's always a theme every single time. It might be the theme of gratitude. It might be the theme of uh, forgiveness, love, but there's always a theme. So after everyone has shared what they need to share with the group, um, you know, a couple of things. Number one, you feel supported. You feel heard. Um, you feel heard. I, I think that's one of the um, biggest challenges that we have. Uh, in our society today is um, is being able to speak and have someone listen right. and have that other person really be there with you, like really be with you in the present moment mm -hmm. and to just take that deep dive and really hear what you have to say. And so um, that I know that this and then from there, you know, sometimes I'll speak to people offline, too. If they want to, you know, share a little more, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, you know, I feel I'm blessed to have lived as long as I've lived and had as many experiences as I've had. So whenever someone reaches out to me and wants to, you know, talk about something, it's like, yeah, let's, you know, let's talk about it. Because I think, and I think yeah. that's what you're doing here, right? I mean, you're, you're creating this beautiful space for people to come and share ideas and for others to listen and, and hear and, and learn and share. And, you know, I, I don't think there's any greater gift that you can give to another human being than actually listening to what's going on. Thank you. And, and um, I just looked down at the word grateful. So I'm grateful that I received a beautiful moment the other day. Um, and what you were describing is that sense of community. And so where I know this Lasting Conversations platform is meant to be community and that we can all each one reach one and help each other along those paths, right? Um, yes. So I'll just share that the gift that I received, because, um, you know, the ego space, ego space or with the social networks these days, you're thinking, well, how many? What are the numbers, right? But sometimes there's the one. Yes. And I will start getting a little bit of emotional because it's just so beautiful that my phone rang out of nowhere the other day um, and I picked it up because uh, there's a discernment. Sometimes you get a feeling, well, is this spam? No, pick up, pick up the phone. 
And there was this woman on the phone uh, with this beautiful French accent. And she asked about me. And it turns out that she said, I just felt I wanted to reach out because I was listening to one of your podcasts from one of your guests. And I wanted to thank you. Now, that guest is a friend of ours who actually passed away a number of months ago. Mm -hmm. And so that then began this beautiful conversation. And I was listening. I was being present with her. And even though I was in the middle of, quote, doing errands, I pulled off the road. And when I sat and I realized this is a beautiful, rich moment that we, I was being gifted and she recognized she was being gifted from the angel spirit and beyond. Oh, and I think, oh, this is why we're here. And, and the gratitude of where I might doubt myself and is this the right thing? And no, it, it's, of course it is because then the legacy that is now recorded from someone who is not here on this plane continues to live on and is now reaching other people. Um, and it's, it's that ripple effect. And so sometimes we don't know the pebble that we're placing and how that's that very seed, isn't it? That's exactly right. It's and, that you know, very seed. So I was so grateful and the gift and the community. And this is, this is why I feel I'm here in general on this planet. I just wanted everybody to get along. I really did. I can just, I can see my little, my little self just like, why, why would people fight? I don't understand. But it, but it gets back into, you know, that old soul's calling of, you know, hanging out and having a cup of tea or having a conversation. I'm seeing your library. You sit in this beautiful chair. You just chat and have a moment um, of, of bits and in, in pee in your pants giggles or where it gets really, really hard. Um, and then these moments in the middle of doing errands one day that all of a sudden, oh, you don't brush somebody off. You sit and you're in presence. And it was mutually, um, we just mutually thanked each other for that moment. And I think that's it. I mean, if I was going to sum it up, I would say that. Yeah. That your soul's calling is the answer to someone else's prayer. And to me, that's it. You know, follow your intuition, follow your soul guidance, you know, follow yeah. those feelings, those knowingness, right? That, that you know, and, and I love what you said that, you know, it's the ripple effect and you, you know, I know, uh, I may not even meet people, uh, but there may be people that have read the book and that, you know, something, something helped to support them in their life, right? by, you know, having that experience, or maybe I was teaching a workshop and, you know, I've had this happen where I, you know, I taught a workshop. Okay. I, um, had a journal book that I used to sell with my books. And this was many, many, many years ago. Um, and, uh, I I've written four books. So this was back in like 2000. And, um, I, I remember, um, I was at a conference somewhere in the United States and this woman bought my book and she bought the journal that went with it. And then many years later, I ran into her again at a completely different conference in a completely different state. She had come to see me speak and I talked to her afterwards and she told me that that notebook was her most prized possession because her husband had gotten sick. He was in the hospital and he was dying. And she took that notebook and put it in the room. And every person that came to visit him wrote something in that notebook for her and her husband so that she would have that after he died. See, you never know. Right? Response. Yeah. You never know. And you never know. So I think that's why, you know, I always encourage people to follow that soul guidance and follow that intuition and, you know, just do it. And you may not even know who you're touching, right? You may not mm -hmm. even know who you're supporting or loving or, you know, you are having compassion for. You don't know, but your soul knows, right? And so that's why we're here to share. And I'm so grateful to be able to share all this uh, with you today. What a blessing. And Thank you so much. And I'm so grateful. Also, I think that, you know, when it goes out into the ethers, there it is. And if somebody happens to click a button and listen or watch on the YouTubes, 
um, or the Instagrams and whatever, there, there it is. And maybe just for those moments, it's something that somebody needs to hear and feel and have it land. And, and I think this is where also the lesson of stepping out of the way um, and not even taking it personal. Maybe our, our guide this morning was talking about not taking it personally because this is what comes through us. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And whoever needs to hear this will hear it. Right. You know, it will find its way. It will find its way. So uh, part of me wants to round out, but I don't think we're com complete quite yet, which might tie back into the corporate world and yes. helping people also in, in these times of thinking something else has got to give. And actually a friend of mine listened to the to travel couple that uh, Norman Kathleen that was just on and, um, and he's going to be coming into retirement and thinking something else is coming. Something else is coming because I've done all the right things. I've done, I've done my life all the right way. So sure. that feels like from your perspective and you came from C-suites and then you did coaching and mindfulness within the world. And again, before a lot of people were doing it. Yep, I did. What would you say to, to those who still, they're feeling something, they're not sure what it is. Um, the energies on the planet are really poking at us to understand these changes from within and it's massive. And so we're here to say, you're going to be okay. And you're not crazy. What else could you say to our corporate leaders, to the people within some of these uh, business type frameworks mm -hmm. that might be feeling, I'm not sure what to do right now. And, and it feels like a bit of a branch that you could um, help us with. Cause you've, we've walked both worlds. Yes. We've been in both. And I did. Yeah. yeah. For, yes. For about 10 years after I retired, I did um, teach mindfulness in the workplace. Right. Uh, Cause I truly um, believe that, and this is scientifically been proven, right. That mm -hmm. when people are stressed, they cannot perform their jobs. Right. Um, they just cannot. And, you know, when you start digging into the statistics and the data, you know, we are very distracted and we're actually not even working <laughs> we're at work because we're so distracted. And there is a lot going on in the world right now. I mean, there there's a you know, if you live in the United States, there's a big election coming up. You know, if you're uh, there are wars going on in the Middle East, right, in Ukraine and Russia and you know, we're all feeling all of that. You know, we're all interconnected and the social media. Um, in fact, um, you know, that's one of the biggest distractors at work is the social media. So what I would say to the leaders is, you know, consider, you know, consider uh, maybe hiring a mindfulness teacher, uh, practitioner, expert um, in your area and consider having them come in and just lead, uh, you know, a mindfulness session and teach some very simple, uh, calming, centering, focusing techniques um, mm -hmm. to your teams. You know, I, I worked with one company and I loved it. We taught everyone just a very simple breath awareness technique where they would focus, close their eyes and just focus on their breath for about five, 10 minutes. And even that five to 10 minutes just helped everyone to calm down, just right. to calm down. And we used to do that and we set it up. So in the morning we had a, five, a 10 minute at nine o'clock and everyone, and I, this was crazy because everyone in the company wanted to do this. And I, I, I was so overjoyed at the acceptance of it, but people felt better. So they, yeah. um, so they would do a, a, like a 10 minute check-in in the morning and we called it, you know, it was our focus time. So to get focused on the day. And then yeah. at three o'clock we did the same thing, but we called it decompress your stress. So here you were being focused in the morning and then later in the afternoon, giving you five to 10 minutes just to let go of everything that had happened that day. And, um, you know, and everybody, it, you know, we did surveys and, you know, measurements and, it, you know, everyone was more calm, more happy, more focused, more productive. And it's a very simple thing. So, um, again, not everyone is going to want to, but I find that once you start some uh, some offerings like this in the workplace, that 
people will see it and they'll go, oh, well, you know, look at, you know, over there. Wow, Heather, she seems like she seems pretty calm today. Look at that. How is she doing that? Right. And then you just start sharing. So, um, you know, allowing your teams uh, to just spend a few moments at the beginning of the day, end of day um, to manage that stress. Because when we're stressed, we, we can't perform. We can't learn. We can't listen. Mm -hmm. You know, these are all things that we need to be successful, you know, in that work environment. And um, that's, you know, everyone's, you know, many people are having a rough time right now. And mm -hmm. even that five to 10 minutes a day would help them. So, and there are people out there who are teaching mindfulness. They're all over the world. We trained hundreds of people. So um, right. they're out there. <laughs> That's right. You were a trainer to the, the to a whole team, which is beautiful. Yeah. And now so many people are working from home or they're yes. digital nomads. So perhaps that's even more of an opportunity to maybe step away from your computer. And now there are it, perhaps easier. You could run music that you enjoy. You're not part of an office that's filled with somebody else's angst per se. But what would you say to those perhaps, you know, working and living alone, maybe there's some isolation there. Are there added tools that you might recommend? Well, I like, you know, I guess I'm just a really big fan of uh, meditation and mm -hmm. mindfulness right. because I think that, um, you know, when we can connect with our center, with our soul, when we can become grounded, um, it just, it, for me, the experience, because I've worked remotely myself. So I've had experience in corporate and as an entrepreneur right. and, you know, a solopreneur. So I've, I feel like I've kind of done it all. Um, mm -hmm. And I understand that you can feel isolated and alone. But when we connect in um, with meditation, with mindfulness, with your soul guided journaling, you know, you just don't feel as alone. And mm -hmm. also, I would say, um, look for some community. There's a lot of people out there that are leading like free meditations online, uh, free mm -hmm. mindfulness sessions online, um, where you could just tap in. Uh, so even if I was working like a solopreneur, like I am now, um, you know, that I could tap in and, and you know, just, uh, just have that experience with a group online. Right. And uh, it works because one of the companies I worked with, they had a large amount of people <clears throat> around the world. And when we would do some of these sessions, they would have people and everybody would come in uh, through Zoom. And we would have the, you know, five to 10 minute mindfulness moment, mindfulness right. moment, we called it. And, uh, you know, it really helped. So I think, you know, having some practices and it doesn't have to be meditation. It could be yoga, right? It could be Tai Chi. It's like whatever, whatever resonates with you, but yeah. having taking a walk outside or stepping out yeah. onto a balcony, getting, getting some sun on your face if you can, exactly. right? Yeah, or yeah, snowflake. Exactly. Yeah. Or a yeah. snowflake. Yeah. Or a snowflake. Yeah. <laughs> just having, you know, just having something I, I like to, I like to like gather what I call sacred practices. And so for me, that's, you know, it's my meditation, it's my mindfulness practices. I love my soul guided journaling, as everyone can tell by now. Mm -hmm. um, I love reading that. I like reading from sacred texts of different, you know, backgrounds. I have a doctorate of ministry and spirituality. So I've studied all the belief systems and the wisdom traditions. And I love to be able just to pick up a book from a, a different belief system and, you know, read some of their sacred words. I love that. I love nature. Of course, we live mm -hmm. by the beach, right? So out by the water, seeing the trees, mm -hmm. you know, but I have a, I, I, I look at it as like have a toolkit. And I don't know if that's the best word, but for me, it's a practice kit. I have all these practices. So mm -hmm. I know when I'm feeling a certain way that, you know what, I need, I think I need to go outside and just walk around for a little bit. Right. Or I need yeah. to go take a look at the birds or, you know, yeah. whatever it is. So having those um, having those like right in your hip pocket to say, you know what, I think I need a few minutes of this. And it's amazing what five minutes will do. Oh, absolutely. Even just the five minutes. Sometimes you need a nap and longer. And of course, yeah. I've had friends say, my God, I haven't slept so long or so often in my life. Well, you need to do that. Just 
let our bodies relax sometimes or and the five minutes or in a parking lot just just taking those deep breaths if you can right. um it, and i call it a treasure box i'm like a tool a toolbox sometimes you yeah. need like the tool belt full of yeah, stuff yeah. or the treasure box oh look at this or at i'll this. take some amethyst today please and some yes. and some music and yeah essential yeah. oils are really nice essential oils yeah, yeah and oil. sometimes it's kick-ass rock and roll i find that too you got and as a matter of fact on the wednesday yes. on on hurricane day yes i put on music so loud i was dancing it out and i was reminded of all the original gray's anatomy where they would literally just oh, yeah. dance it out yeah. you gotta physically have kick it up have some fun but sh you know viscerally shake things out sometimes yeah. I love it. And, you know, and like you said earlier, you know, pick up the phone and call someone. And then call somebody, right. Or reach out. So someone, exactly. You know, I, you know, I do that, you know, with our, you know, you have your family and then you have your soul family and, mm -hmm. you know, people that you can reach out to. And even if you just talk to them for a couple of minutes, you know, I always feel, you know, I have a lot of friends, but not, not that live near me. If that makes right. sense, like oh, my absolutely. Friend, my friends are yeah. all over the world, yeah. Um, because my time here is spent taking care of my parents, so not a lot of socializing, you know, right here. But I do make sure once a month I go away somewhere and visit a friend, right? And just have that, you know, friend time uh, to get right. the support that I need being a caregiver. So that's very important too. And it, absolutely, that self care. That brings it back to another nugget you were sharing a little while ago, you know, where it, it, the surrender, it, yes. we bring it back to ourselves. Yes. Right. And then, and then the, from a full cup, then we can give. Exactly. That's exactly. Yeah. Laurel, I know we could really just go on and on. I think this I is know. a two, I think this might be covering two, if not three episodes. So this is, uh -oh. this is so much oh, fun. Oh, oh, and, but we're just bringing it, bringing it, bringing it. Um, so the yes. book is still available. Um, yes. Jesus no Seeds. Yep. The yeah. Jesus Seeds. Um, just put in the Jesus Seeds and my name, Laurel Geis. It'll come up on Amazon. Um, right. And with it's, its full title, Journal from Awakening to the Christ Consciousness. And this is this is where we're at right now where, you know, it's beyond religion. It's just, it's about love and the dynamics of everything that we've been bringing yeah. forward today yeah, the, right yeah the book is, is so the book you know it was this wisdom that i received it you know ancient perennial wisdom gnosis um that and what it does is it just it it takes you through the reader it takes you through the journey of the soul mm -hmm. from awakening to christ consciousness or krishna consciousness or buddha nature but whatever that higher consciousness is and it just walks you through very simply you know, the different experiences that you can have as you start to have these experiences. And, you know, when you start having like clear voice or clear audience, or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling my ego is really trying to stop this. And then you can feel the shift of the ego going to the back seat and the soul coming forward. And what does that mean? And how do I feel? So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a guidebook. It's an energetic guidebook. Mm -hmm is what it is to just help you with your journey. So yeah, the Jesus seeds, igniting your soul guided life. And then in the appendix, it tells you there's a whole a section at the end of the book about soul guided journaling and how to do that. And then we also, we're going to have uh, a handout too. And then, um, and then to bring it all together is the monthly get together. So um, I know Heather will be posting my uh, contact information. Right. So if you feel like joining us, you know, let me know and I'll send you an invitation to join us. And right. this has been so terrific. Um, I've admired what you've done. I've been watching the progress, the progression, the evolution. And I just have this feeling, Heather, there's a lot more to come. I think so, too. To so <laughs> this is, will, we're welcoming I, in season three, and it's literally a whole other season of my life. And yeah, oh, thank you, Sister so, Laurel. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Thank you, this, Sister Heather. You know, <laughs> how lucky are we to travel through time 
and to have this particular experience together, what a blessing. And thank you for everyone that listens, that hears what we're sharing and that supports you uh, in your, you know, ongoing adventures. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. And I know we're, we're going to put everything in the show notes in writing, um, but tell us where, tell people, the listeners, where to find you. Oh, so um, you can go to my website, which is laurelgeist.com. So pretty easy. There's information about the Jesus seeds there. And, um, and then also, um, I, I would just say that if you are interested in learning more about soul guided journaling or want to get on my private uh, list, I could send you an invitation. You can just um, send me an email in my email. Mm-hmm. So to my private email, which is uh, laurel.geis at gmail.com. Laurel.geis at gmail.com. So that's my private mm-hmm. email. Um, mm-hmm. And I get that. And so, um, yeah, just send me your name and I'll have you in your email address and I'll add you. And I send out a couple of emails a month, letting you know when we're going to get together. Um, right. we'd love to have you, you know, drop in, give it a try. And it's, good. Uh, it's always, the group is very welcoming and very heart centered. So, and, uh, thank you again, Heather, this has been terrific. And maybe I can come back next year. I'm working on a new book. So Yay, I knew there was something, something that, and that's Geis with G E I S E for that's spelling. Right. And there will be more because they're more percolating through, right? More, oh, yeah, there, more gifts yeah. are coming forward. Yep, there's, there's a book. So, next step is to get it published. So, that's where we are in that adventure. So, stay tuned. Right? Stay more tuned. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. And stay tuned, everybody. Laurel, oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, we, I know we tripped the light. Fantastic. We grounded it in for Mm -hmm. our embodiment. Um, and hopefully there's some tools and tricks for people and mostly, mostly it's a giant hug, right? It's a giant hug for those who really are in a hard way. Um, because there's stuff, right. And where we know that there, the sun is always shining, whether it's cloudy or not, and that this too shall pass. Absolutely. Right? This too shall pass. This too shall pass. And you are strong and you know you're supported. And the more that you can connect with your soul and with other soul friends, um, the less alone you'll feel. So stay in contact, right? Stay in touch. Right. And right. Um, Heather's doing great work in the world. Um, so listen to our podcast. There's so much wisdom there. Thank Thanks you. Heather. Thank you, Laurel. Thank and you. thanks for lis- <laughs> and thanks for listening, everybody. Please do like, review, and share, share, share. This is Heather Lockett with Lasting Conversations. We get to the heart of everything. 